Hello, sir. Are you all right? It's pie in the sky, Cambridge. Oh, it can't be that bad. Surely. Why, I keep asking myself, why have all my customers deserted me? Oh, I expect it's just a slow patch. It probably isn't a reason. There's always a reason, Cambridge. Nothing ever happens without a reason. That's the detective's creed, isn't it? For instance, why have you suddenly taken to the air? Ah, well, that was Mr. Fisher's idea. I'm supposed to be undercover. Yes, I gathered that. Why? Information received, really. Don't fence with me, Constable. No. Right. About two weeks ago, the uniforms pulled in a bloke called Ray Fraser. Very small time, actually, receiving stolen cars. But it turns out his brother Archie is a flight mechanic at Thaxford. And he's been telling tales about Bentley Air. What sort of tales? Oh, just hints about a regular delivery to the continent and how their fuel consumption doesn't match up with their flight logs. Well, you get the picture. So, I'm not here because of what happened last night. Uh, an image of sorts begins to emerge. Chiefly the look on Fisher's face when he realized that Leonard Roston was one of Bentley Air's clients. He must have been pretty special, this Roston. Indeed he was. At his peak, Roston had more couriers coming through Heathrow than Thomas Cook's. What I don't understand is why Mr. Fisher's being so secretive. Oh, come on, Cambridge. Interdepartmental politics are his speciality. So this way, if anything goes wrong, he can always put his hand on what passes for his heart and say to the drug squad he didn't know anything about it. So do you think there's a link between Featherstone's death and Leonard Roston? We started out with a former dope smuggler and a bent air taxi firm. And now we have a break-in that isn't a break-in and a murder with no apparent motive. Is there a connection? I think it's a reasonable assumption. All we have to do is prove it. Evening, Sergeant. Looking after all right, are they? Yes, it's quite a revelation, in fact. I didn't know places like this still existed. Oh, you like it? That was the best leek and potato soup I've tasted in years. Thank you. Well, the vichyssoise is good. We're thinking of branching out, as a matter of fact. Maybe get one of those microwave ovens. Well, don't. I beg your pardon? You let the microwave through that door, and before you know where you are, this place will be infested with fruit machines, pipe music, and theme burgers. Now, theme burgers are vile little bits of reconstituted meat substitute slathered in pineapple and grated coconut. Then the place will fill up with every half-witted adolescent moron from Barstock CID, and then you won't be able to move in this place for acne. Now, it's your decision, of course, but that's my advice. Very good, sir. I'll say you enjoyed the soup. Oh, I uh, tracked down Miss Voynant, by the way. She confirms Mrs. Bentley's story as far as it goes, but I didn't push for details. I thought you'd want to speak to her yourself. All right. Thank you. Miss Cambridge? She wants to watch her step. How do you mean? Bit of a lad for the girls, that one. Ah. Uh -huh. Hi. Hi. Do you want a drink? Um, brandy and ginger, please. Mind you, so was Featherson, from what I hear. He seems to be bearing up remarkably well under the circumstances. Yes, sir. I thought that. Thank you, Franco. Sir. Could you excuse me a minute, please? Yeah. Do you want me to come with you? I'll manage, thanks. And don't go back to sleep, Pinkney. I want you to get me everything you can on Bentley Air, company accounts, bank statements, that sort of thing. Any problems, you'll have to go through Mr. Fisher's office, so here's your big chance to impress him, right? 
Yes, Gov. Don't look so miserable, Pinkney. If you want to find out about Roston, why don't you look him up on the computer? That is what it's there for. Oh, yeah. Right. Never thought of that. Miss Wynant? Yes? Uh, my name's Henry Crabb. Oh, yes, um... I was just, uh... No point in putting these things off, is there? Hello. Push off. Don't be like that. I've got nothing to say to you, sweetheart. Well, not even a message for Ray. It's not very brotherly. All I want to know is when Bentley's planning his next little jaunt to France. Ask him yourself, then. I'm asking you. I don't know nothing. Oh, come on, you service the planes, don't you? You fuel them up. Ray will be so disappointed. Tough. You know, he said you were keen on bikes. I'm show me the logbook sometime. Hi. I was looking for you. 